What's up, divas? And what's up, divas? It's your girl, April. So you guys already know what time it is. It's Wednesday. And yes, first I got to moisten up my lips before this video. And on top of that, I'm like really not in the fucking mood today. Like, you ever been in that predicament where you just ain't in the mother fucking mood okay so i did wake up in a really good mood this morning you know what i'm saying i had some shit that i had to do it required me to be there it was an appointment i had to show some paperwork some documents whatever i already uploaded these documents and sent them over to your office prior so this is the second time i'm coming in so yeah when i get there Listen, this is my thing, my pet peeve. I hate when these companies hire a bunch of dumb motherfucking people to work for them. I have this much patience sometimes because I start getting really irritated. Then I feel it in my soul and in my body. Like, it feels like it's like a, a pot boiling or like something that's like a soda. You ever, you seen a soda before? You shake a soda up and it just starts and you take the top off, it just explodes that's how it starts feeling like to me inside when i start getting really impatient and then i feel like i'm about to spaz off so i felt like this this morning when i was handling my business and taking care of my business and i just really cannot stand when people ask the dumbest fucking questions really i just i sent that paper already this is the second time i've been here and somebody already seen all of this and you're asking me you're telling me that i never that i never brought in or i never submitted the paperwork but then i have to remind you to look like I shouldn't have to remind you to do your motherfucking job, but I have to remind you to look. And then when I remind you, you're like, Oh, okay. But not only did I remind you once, twice, three times, but I reminded your punk ass four motherfucking times. Okay. And different occasions at this one fucking appointment, which is really starting to piss me the fuck off. And you just really fuck with me mentally. Like, I, sometimes I be feeling like, am I on a fucking camera somewhere? Uh, and this is a joke. Like, last week, I'll take that for instance. My daughter Tati said, let's go out for lunch. I was like, I don't really want to go out for lunch. She was like, it's my tree. I want to take you out for lunch. All right, cool. We're going to go out for lunch. So it was me, Tati, Mumsy, and Tinky, my grandson. It was just us four. And it was like 11 o'clock in the morning so we went to ihop and when we walked up in there there was only like five customers all right it wasn't crowded so she sets us in the seat all the way in the fucking back like by the bathroom okay whatever bitch um segregation or whatever you call that shit is over bitch i don't have to sit in the back if i don't want to sit in the motherfucking back like don't put me all the way back here so anyway about 15 minutes go by, she finally comes back to the table to take the order. The manager, she's always asked, she already had asked, did she ask you, did you want something to drink? And I was like, no. No, so I'm hungry, I'm starving. You ever be so hungry where your head is hurting? Okay, so I'm like that. I'm so hungry that my head is hurting and I'm getting sick. But I'm, I'm like, well, I'm here, I'm going to eat. So, I, you know, I'm good. Because I know I'm going to eat soon. So, you know, I tell the manager, no, she hasn't come back. So she asks us what we want to drink, and I tell her, you know, listen, I just want some water with some lemon in it, because I don't really try to drink soda anymore. So, cool. She gets our drinks, and then this fucking girl comes back to take the order. So, you know, we order our food. Like, 30 minutes go by. I'm like, damn, a bitch is starving. I'm, like, so fucking hungry. My head is hurting, and I'm starting to spin. My head is starting to spin. So she finally, um, she finally comes back to the table, right? And she brings my daughter Tati's food, my daughter Nate, my daughter Mumsy's food, and my grandson Tinky's food. Now, first of all, she didn't even bring she didn't even bring my food, and I had an omelet with these three pancakes. So she didn't even bring my food, and I'm the one that's starving. But I'm gonna just be easy. But I'm gonna say something about these burnt ass waffles that you brought from my grandson. Like, where he's supposed to eat that at with these chicken strips? So you know, I go up to the desk, and the manager's not there, so I sit down, and she was like, I see the girl, the waitress. And I said to her, you know, I'm like, come here. And she was like, hey, how was your food? I said, I wouldn't know because I didn't get it. Oh, well, let me check on that for you. I said, while you're checking on that, you could take these burnt waffles back because my grandson ain't about to eat these. I said, it took you 30 minutes to bring the food here and there's nobody hardly in here. And you expect him to eat burnt waffles. He's two years old. Where is he eating these burnt waffles? 
They were so burnt. They were so dry that when you stuck a fork in them, they just flaked. Okay? So he ain't about to eat that shit. So she was like, oh, I'm so sorry. I'll bring him another plate of waffles. Okay? And I'm going to find out what's up with your food. So I'm sitting here. Ten minutes, like ten minutes go by. And Tinky got his food back. Okay? But this bitch still ain't, um, she got, he got his waffles. But she still ain't raving my motherfucking food. Not one portion of my food. So I'm sitting there. She was like, I'm having it. I'm checking on it right now. And I said to her at this point, like, I don't really try to be rude to people because that's not me. But at this point, she comes back to the table. She's like, I'm checking on that. I said to her, I said, listen, I ain't trying to be rude to you, but I am, am I on fucking camera right now? And she was like, I'm sorry. What? I said, is this like candid fucking camera? Is this a joke? Am I on like punked or some shit like that? Is somebody going to come out and punk me because I'm a YouTuber or whatever? Because I need to know this shit. She's like, well, what do you mean? I said, because I've been sitting here for like 40 minutes already and everybody else is eating and I haven't had none of my food and I just want my food. I just want to eat. So she was like, I'm so sorry, ma'am. Let me go check. So then this bitch comes out with my omelet. She ain't come out with my three pancakes. The bitch came out with my omelet. So, you know, I'm so hungry at this moment. I'm like, okay, cool. Let me just eat this shit. So then the manager lady comes. She was like, is everything okay? I said, no, it's not. I said, I done sat here and waited 40 minutes for my food. And everybody else is eating it. I didn't even get to eat it. I've been hungry. Not only that, but all my food ain't here. And my grandson's waffles was fucking burnt damn near. I said, no, I'm not happy. I said, I feel like y'all punking me right now. I feel like there's a hidden camera. I'm so sorry, ma'am. Let me go see what's going on with your pancakes. So I'm waiting and I'm waiting. And these, I never, I don't really eat pancakes. So they looked really good. It was like, pancakes with white chocolate chips with raspberries on them. So I was like, you know, I'm going to eat these. She's like, they'll be out in a couple of seconds. A couple of seconds turns to like 10, 15 minutes for my motherfucking pancakes. And she comes back to the table. She's like, here you go. I said, listen, I wanted my pancakes when I wanted my eggs. I said, it was a meal together. I said, I ain't trying to be rude to y'all, but there's nobody up in here. And there's no way that I should have sat here for all this time waiting for my damn food. Well, ma'am, I'm going to just take care of the entire bill for you. And what? The, and look, I had to verify that shit. What do you mean? Confirm that shit with me. Well, I'm, we're just going to take care of the bill. I do apologize for this way. Your waitress is new and all of this shit. Like... She didn't even give us no fucking silverware. We had to go to a different tables and get some silverware. Like, is this a motherfucking joke? Like, I was seriously, I said, listen. I said, listen. And I, when I get really uptight, I'm just like, I go like this because I'm trying to calm myself down from spazzing the fuck out because I know how I could get. I said, look, I'm glad that you guys are taking care of the bill because I wasn't going to pay for that shit no fucking way. I said, but... Maybe you might want to talk to her and the chef because the service here sucks. So then she leaves and she comes back like 10 minutes later. She's like, how was the food? I said, you know something? For it to be so long of a wait, the pancakes are really fucking good. She's like, I'm glad you like them. I said, yeah, they were really good. I said, they were kind of worth the wait. I said, however, they weren't worth the wait, but I'm going to just say they were really, really good. So that's what I'm talking about. I hate dumb motherfuckers, and I hate people that just, do I need to keep fucking remind you to do your job? Because there are a lot of people out there that need a fucking job, okay? A lot of fucking people. And I'm not trying to say I'm smarter than anybody else. I'm not trying to say I'm better than nobody else. But I hate to go some fucking where where I'm prepared, and then your motherfucking ass ain't prepared. And then I have to constantly keep reminding you. And then that shit fucks with me and fucks with me. Because here I am, I'm sitting here, and I'm about to spaz the fuck off on you because you acting like you fucking stupid or illiterate. You don't know no motherfucking better when there are plenty of people that are capable of getting the job done that could use the fucking job. This is the shit that I be talking about. I hate dumb motherfuckers, okay? This is, like, part of the reason why I really feel like leaving YouTube. I really feel like leaving YouTube because there be, like, dumb motherfuckers. Dumb motherfuckers that write dumb shit on my video about my daughter. And I'm constantly keep warning them. And so now I had to take it upon myself to get your IP address. I don't really understand a lot of people. Do people think that it's okay to fucking cyber bully people? Do people think it's okay to talk shit and be an internet gangster? Because it's not cool. You have an IP address. You have an account. It's very easy. It's easy access, easy accessible to get your fucking pinpointed IP address and where the fuck you reside at and come knock. Knock. 
on your motherfucking door. Like, seriously. People, stop doing dumb, unnecessary shit. Just pay attention. Please, people, pay the fuck attention because when you don't pay the fuck attention, a lot of shit goes down and that's not fucking cool. Like, a lot of people like myself don't have patience for too long. My patience runs real thin on a motherfucker. So, if you want to know how my motherfucking day has been today, it's only 12 o'clock in the afternoon and I'm pissed the fuck off already, okay? My day is fucking ruined. I was going to come home. I was going to put my makeup on. I was going to do a wig video. But I can't because of my appointment this morning. It fucked me up so bad mentally to where I was like, you know what? This bitch and her stupidity has fucked up my day. Like, literally fucked up my morning. And it wouldn't be just so bad if you just fucked it up for me. And I had to, I was done with you. But no, bitch. I have to come back there tomorrow for you. So, like... Yeah, that's why I fucked my day up because I have to be bothered with your punk ass tomorrow because you didn't get your, your motherfucking ducks in a row or your eggs in a goddamn basket. And I tell you what, tomorrow when I go there, a bitch better have every fucking thing straightened the fuck out because if you don't, you gonna see a little light skinned freckled lady spazzing the fuck off. And I say little because I'm not tall, all right? <sighs> and I'm not one of those who be like, her bark is worse than her bite. No, bitch, my bite is way fucking worse than my goddamn bark. Bitch, I'm gonna bite your shit the fuck off. Other than that, it's the norm. My life has been the norm. Um, I have just been doing what the fuck I need to do. Um... I got a fucking wooster for a second because I'm just like, for those of you guys who have been watching The Walking Dead for seven years now, hashtag TWD, okay? Because seriously, The Walking Dead season finale was the bomb, all right? I cannot believe Sheba, the motherfucking tiger, started attacking. But I was so praying that she was going to attack Negan's punk fine ass. Yes, I called him fine because he ain't ugly. However, I would like to skin his fucking ass, okay? Like, literally. Fucking skin him alive and place him in a fucking burning ass fire. All right, to burn to hell. Like, the season finale was great. I'm so, I'm not, like, really pissed off that Sasha went out like that because she went out like a trooper. She took one for the home team, and I'm so proud of her that she did it that way. Like, she really went all out. But it's kind of fucked up because, in my opinion, like, Abraham really wasn't her man to begin with. You know what I'm saying? That was Rosita's man. And for the way that Sasha got so attached to somebody she just started fucking with, it's like, all right, y'all bitches don't realize it's the motherfucking apocalypse. Why is y'all so worried about fucking relationships and sex and dick. I'm I'm a bitch. I don't give a fuck. I'm trying to worry about how to stay the fuck alive. I don't even give a fuck about a man, okay? I barely give a fuck about one right now, but definitely when there's not a fucking bunch of zombies and walkers and crazy fucking shit going on in the world, I could care less about being in a relationship and throwing shade on the next bitch because you fucking with my man who left me with or during the apocalypse to fuck with you. Nigga, bye. If you can fucking leave me during the apocalypse and fuck with the next bitch, then you got your priorities all fucked up, all right? Like, seriously, who the fuck does that? So that's the part that kind of pisses me off with Sasha because, like, bitch, wasn't you? into Bob, okay? You was into fucking Bob, and then he fucking got ate the fuck up. He, he got bit and then turned and then died. Like, let's just, come on now. And then your brother, like, let's come... We need to be here, everybody. When the world is coming to a motherfucking end and we have to fight off fucking human beings that are really dead and they walking around wanting to fucking bite us and shit, I think we should really not worry about a relationship right then and there. Um, because I'm not going to be around to give you no motherfucking advice. However, I just really think that you need to cover your ass and worry about your safety. Okay? If you with a man, 
while apocalypses went down and you in a relationship, hopefully that man stayed true and y'all could stay and stay this one out. But I'm sorry, I'm not about to break up with no motherfucking body during the apocalypse. Like, bitch, we gonna ride this shit out together. Like, seriously. So, I mean, like, that's the part that pissed me off, but I really... And also, another thing with the show is, I mean, I've been watching this since day one for seven years, and it's always like, whenever they bring a new black person on the show, they always kill off a motherfucking nigga. Like, have y'all ever noticed that? One new black person will be brought onto the show, and then they will kill off another black person. Like, who the fuck does that? Like, maybe you guys want to do that in the real world? But yeah, this is what always happens. But I love the show regardless. I think they went hard. I think it could have been a little bit better planned out. Like, it wasn't like the best ending, but it was a good ending. Like, I really was happy to see that these motherfuckers scared off needing them. And, you know, and, and the kingdom came through, you know what I'm saying? And the hilltop came through. But there's got to be a lot of motherfucking change. Like, Gregory from the hilltop, he does not need to be a leader anymore. I think either Jesus or Maggie needs to be a motherfucking leader. And then we got you know the kingdom with the black guy with dregs um dreads um i forget his name um just that fast um hezekiel and his his tiger um sheba now listen i think hezekiel really need to be real with himself and stop fucking talking like he's a goddamn 24 7 poetic justice motherfucker always talking some bullshit and fucking just be yourself and because he he he's so into fucking acting he was in he was an actor before all of the fucking apocalypse came down nigga just talk regular all this shit. You fucking worked at the zoo taking care of fucking animals. That's how you got the tiger. Alright, so let's just be ourselves. But I'm glad that they all came through. Carol came through was, you know, popping off. Morgan came through popped off. I'm happy that they all came through. But I tell you what, when October gets here I hope Negan's fucking punk ass is dead. Yes, Negan, I said that shit and a bitch like me will come for you. Okay? I'll come for you. So if you love The Walking Dead, hashtag TWD down below. And let me know your thoughts about that. Another show that I've been watching, um, it's new to me, but I'm done watching every last eight seasons, is Dexter. I've never watched this show in its entirety ever before. Um, it just wasn't for me. I never really gave it a chance because I was really into The Walking Dead. But you know something? It's a really get great series, so I do like it. So I'm, I just finished watching that today. And I actually do, like this morning when I was getting dressed, I really do like it like dexter is one like cool serial killer like he serial kills for a reason so i give him his props for that so yeah i love that show a lot and i'm going to start watching this other show um what the fuck is it ah, i forget the name of it but it's still actually on television but they have 12 seasons on netflix it's about that hospital um it's been on forever it's they're like oh man i can't remember offhand um not that Happy Gilmore girl shit. Um, Grey's Anatomy. So I'm going to try to start watching that because I need something to watch now. But yeah, so if you guys watch Grey's Anatomy, let me know what you guys think of that. Am I going to be interested in it or not? I really don't know. Maybe a bitch like me will rewatch Dexter. But yeah, so let's get into this real fucking talk. If you have a real talk that you would like me to comment on and talk about, then please email me at muffinismylovers2012 at gmail.com. Please put in the subject line, real talk. And if you want to change the names of your characters, meaning... If your name is April, but you really think that everybody that's watching my real talk is going to know that we talking about show ass, then you can certainly call yourself Sally or something else that you like to be called. And other than that, we about to get on to it with this real talk. Okay. Yes. Hi, April. I watch your videos a lot, mainly with you and your daughter, Mumsy. My name is Maya. You can call me Maya. I'm 16, so I'm probably a younger viewer of yours. Anyway, I like watching videos of you and your daughter because that's how me and my mother used to be. We aren't like that anymore, and it saddens me a bit. I have a 21-year-old brother named Tim. Tim is slightly delayed in a mature state of mind. Despite that, he's smart, highly intelligent, and can legit do anything on his own. However, my mother literally treats him like he is a two-year-old just learning how to potty train it's a bit odd how I get treated like the oldest although I'm the youngest out of four I get put on the back burner I have a 4.5 GPA with honor rolls up the roof my accomplishments never see the day of life rather my mom brags about Tim she caters to Tim and treats Tim like a baby literally a grown man 
He doesn't do anything but treat me like crap along with my family and lay on the couch eating up the food he didn't pay for. All my life, Tim has made fun of my chunky built, built, build, which has put a huge debt in my self-confidence. I feel so weird wearing anything that exposes me, and he is the reason why. I mentioned this because no matter how much of a mean person he can be, my mother still, still treats him like royalty, enables him, and, and I even think Tim pretends to be sick just to get my mother's attention. Ever since Tim's been 18, my mom's attention has been on him and has completely shifted. She used to be literally my best friend. Now, all we do is argue and bicker at each other. My my grandparents passed away when I was very young. My father and mother split up, and he moved and he up and moved to California. I haven't talked to my father in three years. My sisters are equally as mean as Tim, so I jump from a frying pan into a forest fire. Basically, I cry at night because I feel like I have nobody to turn to. I don't ask for much to be a teenager. I am low maintenance, and I am not a bad kid. I mean, I barely have any friends to have bad influences yet I still get treated poorly I'm lost in life and I really am confused on why I'm being treated like trash there's not a day that goes by that I don't sit and cry I know people have it worse but I still feel my situation is pretty crappy at this point I want to constantly harm myself badly your videos are the only thing helping me get through the good and bad days and I hope you read this I'm sorry I made it so long hopefully you don't mind wow so you know what saddens me is that the fact that this young lady is only 16 and she feels like she wants to harm herself because of the fact of the way she's being treated at home. Like I can't really relate so much because I haven't had, like I'm the eldest out of all of my siblings and even though me and my siblings, siblings have different mothers and different pa and fathers, um, you know what I'm saying? It just sucks that I can some somewhat relate to that. I'm only on a parent parental portion meaning like with my mom and my five kids like I really don't feel like she should be asking me and my mother what are my children's names except for one of them my firstborn like you don't know your grandkids names because you so favor one of them and that sucks so I can kind of relate to that but I really can't um I haven't I've never had the issue of being mistreated, you know, I lived with my mom all of my life. My sister is 12 years younger than me, so I was an only child until I was 12 with my mom. And I did have brothers, but my father had his second child when I was 12 also. So, you know, it kind of like worked out for both ends, and I'm still the eldest. But it sucks when you have to live in a household with your mom that's constantly bickering with you, and then you have these siblings who you would hope that would be on your side, but they just act like assholes too. And it's like you don't have nobody to turn to. Your father has uprouted and moved off, and you haven't spoken to him in three years. And then your grandparents have passed away. So, like, where is Maya's other family? So I feel like I really feel bad for her. So the one thing that I can tell you to do, because it feels like nobody is around for you, and I appreciate the fact that you and me and Mumsy's videos make your day go by or make your feel like makes your day a little bit more cheery but you shouldn't have to count on me and Mumsy to make you feel any different or any better in life you know what I'm saying you should automatically feel that way and you should automatically get that feeling from your family so when you have issues like this at home you know and you really can't turn to anybody at home then there's the next sources or either you can either turn to your friends for advice and being that you're only 16 your friends really can't help you out much and they really can't can't give you advice so this is my thing that what you need to do like do you have aunts or uncles that you can turn to then again sometimes that could be kind of like a conflict so then what I would do if I were you like sometimes a lot of people don't like to have bring other people into their business but you know what sometimes we got to do what I, we got to do just for our own sanity and just for us to make sure that we stay and just for us to be comfortable because why should anybody be mistreated and why should anybody have to go through some bullshit in life where they living in a household and everybody is jumping on you and jumping at you and just really mistreating you in ill ways I'm sorry but I'm the one I wouldn't deal with that running away is not going to help this situation you know what I'm saying it's only going to make it worse and then you got it from house to house you got a house hop you got a house hop so Maya here is my suggestion to you what I would do if I were you is 
you know, I know you go to school, you get good grades. I would really advise you to talk to someone in school. When I say talk to someone in school, do you have a teacher? There are plenty of teachers in your school, but I'm pretty sure there's one teacher out of like eight that you probably see each day because I know you're 16, so you're changing classes, so you don't sit in one classroom all day. Long, you have like different teachers because you're in high school, so... You, I'm pretty sure you have one teacher that you favor the most, that you can confide in, that you can go to and explain your situation and explain what's going on. Because these teachers, these counselors, they have help. They have resources that can help you and they can help you as a young adult. You don't have to be stuck in that situation. Granted, your mother's probably going to be upset with you for putting her business out there and so are your siblings. But you know what? It's not fair to you to have to live in a household where you feel so uncomfortable. And like you said, you jump in front of the fire pan, to a frying pan to the, to the fire. Like, I'm sorry. That's a very uncomfortable situation. And I have been in plenty of uncomfortable, situ uncomfortable situations, though they may not be like what you have been in, but I have lived in uncomfortable situations. And it is very uncomfortable to to live with somebody that your ass don't fucking like or you don't get along with or you just want them to fucking leave your house. I have had that with the ex-boyfriend that used to live here and I was so glad when I got rid of him. It will almost be a year at like the middle of this month or more or less like the end of this month. He will be gone and I will be so motherfucking happy, okay? Or was it, it was actually the first week of May. I can't, I'm just like so fucking happy okay not bitter but fucking happy i was so tired of him like so fucking tired of him i've never been so tired of somebody in my life to where i would just look at them and just want them to die in their fucking sleep like just fucking literally die in your sleep okay like i have never felt like that about anybody in my life and but him so i can totally understand your living situation and how you felt and how you feel at the time. So my suggestion to you would be, it's always best because you are a young adult to seek help and advice from your guidance counselor or your teachers at school because they're going to point you in the right direction. You know, I'm pretty sure your mom is not going to be too happy at the fact that, you know what I'm saying, you are basically putting your business out there, but who are you supposed to run to and talk to? Also, my advice to you would be this. If you can get in touch with your father, if you can try to find out where he's at, even if you can't, maybe your teacher, maybe your guidance counselors can help you find out. Just ask your mom. Hey, where's dad? You know dad's last information. Look on Facebook. Try to ask somebody from your dad's immediate family. Have they heard from him? Do they know where he's at? So maybe that way you can reach out to your father and and speak to him and inform him what's going on. Maybe he can allow you to come live with him. You know what I'm saying? There's a reason why your dad just up and left. You know what I'm saying? Maybe him and your mom wasn't getting together. But please, I would advise you, totally advise you to seek um, help from people at your school. And also, you know, see if you can find out where your dad is at. So that way you can reach out to him and get help from him. Because maybe he'll let you come live with him. Now, as for your brother who is 18 and your mom is babying him and treating him like he's just potty trained. Let me tell you something, honey. She going to continue to do that. And he's going to continue to eat that shit the fuck up. And as long as he enables him and as long as your mom enables your brother to do these things and do these things sweetheart he is going to feed off of that and he's just going to be lazy and he ain't gonna do shit i learned this the hard way because my eldest son he is 24 he'll be 25 in august and i would like kind of give him everything that he needed and everything he wanted and then he would constantly just be calling me even living in new york where he's at now he would text me or call me ma can you order me some pizza meaning order it for him and pay it for him you're a grown-ass man with a fucking family why is you calling me or texting me to order you dominoes off of my motherfucking credit card i think that you should be willing to help me or asking me hey ma you need something do you need anything being that you have a motherfucking job and i'm holding it down here you should want to take care of your mom and help her to fuck out but i get it that was where i was wrong and i enabled him and i had to Teach him the hard way, like, listen, you grown, you're going to have to do this shit on your own. Now, I have an 18-year-old son now who I have somewhat enabled, but I had to let him know, like, listen, 
You're going to have to give me some motherfucking rent money. You're going to have to do this. You're going to have to do this. I help you, but you need to help your fucking self because I started seeing that pattern. And I'm tell you what, I'm 42 years old. I got five motherfucking kids and two grandkids. I'm not about to be fucking baby and all y'all motherfuckers, okay? Y'all need to grow the fuck up and take care of me, okay? Because I'm your mother. I'm old. I'm getting old, you know what I'm saying? I got teeth that are bothering me. My knee has been acting up again. I have not slept in a couple of days because my knee has been hurting. So if anybody needs care, it's me. So you have to teach your kids early. I'm thankful that my daughter, who is going to be 21 this month, Tati, she is so mature and enough that she takes care of me. She makes sure that I'm all right. She cooks dinner, et cetera, et cetera. Even my 18-year-old, he does the same too. But sometimes he has his moments as well. But as parents, we need to realize, like, you cannot baby them all their life. Because if you do, the motherfuckers... They just gonna be lazy bums. But I tell you what, Maya, even if you have had awards and your GPA is all of this and you have had all these accomplishments, but your family is not like noticing them or not saying anything about them, just leave it be. You know why? Because in the long run, you are the one who's going to blossom into like this beautiful young lady who is able to take care of herself and you're gonna see your brother that's gonna still be at home. So don't worry about nobody but you. But first of all, foremost, first and foremost, make sure that you go to your school and ask them for help and let them know what's going on because they will be more than helpful and they will be more than happy to help you. You know what I'm saying? And also try to find out where your dad is at. So let this little young diva know what you guys would do in a situation. Me personally, I would definitely go ahead and freaking ask for help at my school. A lot of people get their pride caught up and listen, I know I'm one of those same people because I always be preaching to y'all about, oh, um, stop acting too prideful, blah, 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 blah. Be so prideful. I'll be the main one. You know what I'm saying? The main fucking one. So this one right here, I wanted to... This is not... It's a real talk. Cause she labeled a real talk, so I'm going to read this shit. You know what I'm saying? Right before I came across... She didn't say, hey, April, or nothing. She just says, it just started like this. Right before I came, right motherfucking before. There ain't no motherfucking, hi, April. I don't want you guys to see her email, but it says, right motherfucking before. Like, they ain't no hi, but whatever. Real talk. Right before I came across your video, I was saying to myself that I need to find a different dentist tomorrow. And here comes your video, and I'm going through the same thing. I'm 35 years old. My insurance doesn't pay for anything, but to take them out and give me dentures that are not cute and so I'm so depressed about it and being a mother of four it's hard to say for my teeth to be done I remember I woke up with a tooth broke off in my mouth how I cried and my boyfriend was like what's wrong with me being being me I told him nothing he says he wouldn't leave me but deep down I think that girl will come along that has the perfect teeth who's going to take him away from me it's really scary to me I'm already having low self-esteem um, I already had low self-esteem. And if you can understand what I'm feeling, and I know you can, April, listening to, to just listening to, to you talk about how you would have toothaches and go, and then they will go away, and then your teeth would break, and you would say, you know, at least I still have my teeth in the front. I will catch myself saying the same thing, April, but I'm kicking my ass about it now. I'm really happy to have, I'm really happy that you, April, have a GoFundMe, um, page. I wish I had money to help you out, but I don't. Shit, I wish I could even make me a page for GoFundMe, but I had no petty people, and I would be the laugh and the joke of the town, so I don't even want to bother asking anyone for help. But I thank you for having the courage to talk about your teeth, because there are so many people out there like yourself and me that are going through this, so don't feel alone. Um, and she put her name, Latia. So, Latia, I think that's how you pronounce it. So, I just wanted to tell her, you know what I'm saying, other people that are watching me, you know what I'm saying, like, honestly, I really didn't think, like, I never even thought to stop to think about, is, are there other people that are going through the same situation like myself with their teeth, you know, because you see all these people on social media, on TV, that have, like, these perfect teeth and some people that that complain and like girl my teeth ain't perfect i'm going to get them done and you might see like one little jacked up tooth over here and one little jacked up tooth and then the rest of the teeth are like perfect and you're like you serious like i know me personally i'll be like are you crazy really you got like the best teeth ever i'd give anything to be like where you're at right now with your teeth like so i i, I like i never really 
stop to think about like, do other people go through the same shit? Because I just, you know, we just stop and we look at everybody else's teeth or whatever, their body shape. And we just like, damn, I wish I was like that person. So, you know, it did take a lot of courage from me to say anything about it. And it took a lot of courage from me, a whole lot of courage to place that GoFundMe on my Facebook page. I have yet to tweet about it because I'm still in denial about asking for help because I'm not that type of person. I really don't like to ask for help. So it took, it took a lot of courage from me and Latanya, I think that's how you pronounce it. And if not, I do apologize. And it still takes a lot. So like I still go through it, you know what I'm saying? And I know how you feel about that perfect girl with the perfect teeth that's going to come through and she's going to take him away because like if you got like the perfect smile, people, your teeth are like the first thing that someone notices when you're talking. Your facial, your appearance right here is the first thing that people notice. So I totally get it. And even if I would just have like the little bit of teeth that I had and they wouldn't be falling out and still need to be removed, I would be happy. But, you know, like I have my issues like, yeah, I got like this little straggling tooth right here, you know, which is such an embarrassment to me when I see people, I'm like constantly covering my mouth because I'm very embarrassed. So I, I just want to thank everybody who has been supportive to me and has been telling me to keep my head up and sweetheart, girlfriend, you're real talk. I can totally relate to it. And you know something, it is hard to save up, but just save up. That's what I've been doing. I've been saving up and just saving up and saving up a little bit goes a long way. And you know, listen, dentures might not be what you want, but they're, they're the most affordable. And for me, I don't have any um, other options. Um, I have to get the dentures in the back. I don't have the option of getting implants because the doctor told me that is not an option for me. I didn't ask him why, because when he said it wasn't, I didn't even want to give a fucking hear. But I didn't want to hear what the fuck he had to say because I was already like, you told me it wasn't an option, I'm done. I don't want to hear why it's not a fucking option. Just give me my motherfucking dentures and I'm put that in the back of my fucking mouth so my teeth don't spread apart anymore. And I don't have this fucking big ass gap where it looks like a missing tooth. Sometimes we got to just be happy with what we have. So when I get my denture back here... Trust and believe. You're going to see a bitch on camera taking it out and showing you guys because I'm going to be happy about it. Yeah, about a denture. Yes. So, mm. so thank you, everybody, for constantly uplifting me about my teeth and also for donating to my GoFundMe page. And I thank everybody for that. And sweetheart, girlfriend, don't worry. Listen, shit takes time. Now, this is another Real Talk and OMG. When I say OMG, this is a long motherfucker. So let's just get into this one really quick, okay? Hey, Miss April, thanks for taking the time to read my email. I have watched your videos for as long as I can remember, and I would like your thoughts on my current living situation with my brother and his girlfriend. This email is very long. I apologize in advance that it is so messy and seems all over the place. Y'all won't believe what I've been going through. She, When she say it's long, it's motherfucking long, okay? Me and my brother live together. He is only four years older than me. We fight no matter what because we are siblings. But since he decided to move his girlfriend in last year in November, there are no words to explain how hard my life has been. I have never really liked her and always thought something was off with her, but tolerated her because that's how I am. But her moving in from being evicted from her apartment actually gave me a reason to not like her. She's a literal, she is literally a slob. She does her makeup in the bathroom, leaves foundation caked up in the sink, leaves my kitchen a fucking mess, and just makes living in my own shit so difficult. You are a guest in my eyes. I shouldn't even know you're living with me. She was never taught how to properly clean a damn thing, nor does she have basic common sense, and it makes be makes being in my own house difficult. Her and my brother are both alcoholics. I thought he was bad until I met her. They literally fight over who drank the last of the bottle and stuff like that while I'm in the next room trying to sleep. All they do every day is fight over little and sometimes important things. She's a very insecure girl. Like, I have never met anyone so insecure until her if a girl in a bikini pops up on tv and my brother sees it she'll have a whole panic attack get all upset and complain about how he shouldn't be looking at other girls her insecurities got in the way of my brother's eight year long friendship with a family friend that he messed around with back in the day 
They haven't messed around since like 2009. But his girlfriend now thinks even though this girl is with someone else and has three kids, she still wants my brother. We don't even see the girl that often. My mom's car is broken, so she gives us a bribe when we need them. That's the only reason why we see her and when we get to speak to my brother's ex-girlfriend. His girl slipped up and told our family friend, um, um, my brother's girlfriend slipped up and told our family friend that she was only my brother. She was only with my brother for his income tax returns and a place to stay. The family friend told me what she said, but my brother's girlfriend denied saying it and got so defensive and went all crazy on us, calling us all liars. Longer short, longer story short, his girlfriend is fucking nuts. I've had to confront this bitch a dozen times about cleaning or whatever the problem seemed to be for that day. But me talking never worked. And my brother is the punk who always takes her side. When they fight, he'll come to get me to make me leave her house. Wait, when they fight, he'll come to get me to make me make her leave our house. I'll go to I'll I'll have to go make her leave and he'll be like, no, stop. He always drags me in this shit, then tells me to back off. Longer story short, confronting her multiple times hasn't worked. I wanted her out of my damn house and life, but my brother won't have it. She's white and is always screaming about how ghetto something or someone is. And I didn't like it and had to check her on that. Which leads me to the next point. Nothing made sense as to why he would make me fight for him and then tell me to stop when I did until she started throwing the word faggot around. I hate that word, okay? I'm sorry, but I hate that fucking word. They were argue arguing and she called him a faggot. And he was... And, oh, and, and all he said was, so I heard it, but brushed it off because at, at that time I thought it meant nothing. Later that night, they argued again. And the next thing I know, he storms out of his room and goes, hey, insert my name here. I'm bisexual. Then slams his door shut and goes to sleep. So she was blackmailing my brother by saying, I'll tell your mom you're a faggot whenever they fought or argue or whenever she got mad or whenever she got mad at him. He had to tell us. His deepest, darkest secrets, all because of her ways and who's how she is. In December, they argue one night, I guess. I couldn't make out much. All I heard was a loud thug sound. Then my brother gasping for air and saying, get off me, multiple times. I run upstairs to find out that this bitch was choking him to death. He literally was gasping for air and screaming for me. She claims he hit her, so she tried to defend herself. I didn't hear her hit him. I didn't hear him hit her, but she legit tried to kill him that night. <sighs> but she legit tried to kill him that night. She was so drunk, she can be... Oh, my God, with the text messages. Okay. Okay, sorry about that, because I had to answer these text messages, and I'm, like, tired of people fucking bothering me already. Just, like, leave me the fuck alone for the day. Like, seriously. Okay, so, like I was saying, I ran upstairs to find out that this bitch was choking him to death. He literally was gasping for air and screaming for me. She claimed she hit, he hit her, so she tried to defend herself. I didn't hear him hit her, but she legit tried to kill my brother that night. She was so drunk, she can barely remember it to this day. Anyway, a few weeks go by. I told myself that I was fed up with her calling my brother a faggot and saying we're ghetto because we're mixed. So I decided the next time that they argued, I was going to run up on her ass and settle the score no matter what, if it had to do with me or not. Sure enough, they start arguing again about his money, $100 that she had just had in her hand. Um, that goes with her using him for money that he barely fucking has. Just what she told our family friend is what she does is use him. So they fought for a minute about it. And of course, because he wanted his damn money, this is the reason why they were arguing. The next thing I know, she's throwing his new game system, literally throwing it. He just bought this an hour before, and it goes flying across the room. So he's just like, look, bitch, on my dad's grave, you got to get out of my house right now. So that was my cue to put the gloves on. I run up in his room and started gathering her shit for her. She was so shit face drunk, she couldn't even focus on anything. I had had it, so I was just throwing her shit in a pile by his door and she still wouldn't leave. I let them argue for, for a few seconds until I cut in like, you got 10 seconds to leave my house. 
She didn't move. So then I walked behind her and pushed her out of the computer chair and she rolled up in a ball on the ground and started freaking out. I was yelling at her to leave and she still wouldn't. So I just started beating the back of her in the head. I was sick of her and her shit. I can admit that that time I did get carried away and had no right to just attack her like that, but I couldn't take it anymore. Long story short, she still wouldn't leave after I hit her. She got up and continued to run her mouth and tried to run up on me this time. So I knocked her ass around in his bedroom. I was literally pulling her hair from underneath my acrylics after we were done. This time she was done with me, I guess. She literally turned into the devil because she was so mad because she had gotten beaten up. She was jumping on his bed screaming about how she needed to get out of here and how about how ghetto I was. It was a mess. She legit was the exorcist or something. Out of nowhere, her drunken rage, she's yelling at me and goes, fuck you, fuck your moms too. I'm like, bitch, what? And run up on her for the final time. My brother separated us all about three times. Being the punk he is, and he never defends me or our mom once and never has his girlfriend um, goes crazy. I go, I go get my mom from her room after the last fight. She storms over, grabs the bitch by her neck, and holds her in midair like I have never seen anything like this in real life before. My brother breaks it up before my mom kills her. It was so chaotic. So to make this short story shorter, I'm sorry it's a lot. This girl still will not leave our house. Even after being attacked by me and my mother, she won't leave. She's not on our lease, but she actually revealed her evil plan the night I beat her up, saying she had established residency at my house since she had been there for over 30 days, proving what my friend told me. She was right about her only wanting a place to stay. She supposedly has been on pills since she was about 12, but won't take them anymore because her insurance keeps messing up. My mom says she has multiple personalities, and I agree. After the fights, she'll talk, and I'll stop because I literally don't recognize her anymore. Every time she talks, she sounds different. I lock my door at all times when she's around. They have come to an agreement that she wouldn't be in the house when my brother isn't there. And today she has tried to get in, knowing damn well my brother was at work. My brother calls my mom and cusses her out because he won't let her in the house and says he can't stand her. His own mom, he can't stand my mom over this bitch. This girl has something else on him. We just can't figure it out. He is even cheating on her now, but will not make her leave the house or leave. He has also revealed to me last week that when he's with the other girl, he doesn't fear for his life. What is your take on the past few months of my life? I'm sorry I'm horrible at explaining how sorry viewers for this. Okay, basically she wants to know what to take on her life. Okay, let me tell you something. First of all, this was a long motherfucking overdrawn goddamn fucking email, okay? And I'm sorry, sweetheart, that you're hearing me say this, but your motherfucking email was so fucking long to the point where you was giving me a fucking headache and I'm ready to just fucking hit the bomb and just hit the weed pipe because, like, for real right now, between the motherfucking emails, the text messages, excuse me, texting me while I was trying to this long, trying to read, between the long ass t email and the motherfucking text messages, I have got a fucking headache, okay? This real talk session today has been fucking hell. Like, seriously, motherfucking hell. Oh! Here's the solution. She had 30 days to be in your house to establish residency. It's really not 30 motherfucking days, but the bitch has been there longer than that now. Here's what the fuck you need to do. You need to go to the police department and get an order of protection against her, and then she will be removed from your house. This is how you do it, okay? Because she has been there for more than 30 days now. She's probably been there like 60 days. She is what we call now, she has established residency because she has lived there. She's it's, There's a squatter's law. It's called a squatter's law, and that's what she has. So what you need to do in order to get her evicted from your home is you need to go to the police station and get an order of protection. You, your mom, and your brother. Your brother ain't even got to get shit, but you and your mom need to get one. And then you need to give that to her. You can call the police and they will remove her from your home. 
I'm sorry, but me personally, that bitch would have been motherfucking gone. What have I, my take on this whole thing is, my, my take on this whole motherfucking email is it was too long and drawn the motherfucker out, okay? There was so many ways for you to break this down to me. You just kept saying literally like 50 million times, and I'm sorry, I am here to help you, and I'm here to do real talk, but a bitch like me can't read the same fucking thing over, 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 over again. I hate when people say it literally like in a million sentences over and over again. That shit pisses me off. And then when you said to make a long story short, you said that shit about 15 fucking times. This paragraph is like well overdrawn. Like I'm pretty sure this took you like 30 minutes to write it to me because it either way, I'm just going to break it down to you like this. Because I'm not going to waste anybody else's more fucking time. You got a crazy ass bitch living in your motherfucking house. A crazy ass white bitch living in your motherfucking house who feels like she could call somebody the word faggot. And I hate that motherfucking word. I hate that word with a passion. Okay? I fucking hate that word. This bitch would have been long time ago, got her tongue ripped the fuck out of her mouth, and had it wrapped around her throat to strangle her with it. But being that y'all motherfuckers didn't do that, and you got this bitch up in there, and your brother already said that he fears for his life with her, then what you need to do is take that shit to the police department, tell them what the fuck is going on, and that she's not on your lease and she doesn't even belong there. They will give you an order of protection, and then that bitch will be served papers, and she will be removed from your house. That's what the fuck you should have been done did, and that's what the fuck you need to do now. I'm not going to continue on with this fucking email giving you advice because that bitch should have been long gone, and I would have been long gone, beat her motherfucking ass. So there you fucking have it. Yes. This real talk has been just stressed me the fuck out today because of the people that have stressed me out today and because of the text message that I cannot stand when a motherfucker will text me 50 million motherfucking times say that shit in one motherfucking text anyway on to the next one okay I've already changed the names hi April I've already changed the names of the, of the characters you can call me Kai Kiera, I'm writing you on behalf of a friend of mine named Carmen. She's a 29-year-old college graduate who lives at home with her mom. One day, Carmen and I were hanging out, and I noticed that she had been uneasy. She's telling me she's having issues with her mom. They don't see eye to eye about certain things, from career choices to what kind of guys that she dates. One day, she vented to me about an argument she and her mom had gotten into. Carmen met a guy through a dating app called Happen. I think that's just how you say H A P P N. Um, and his name is Devin. Now this is the part where she gets um, where it gets real. One day, Carmen and Devin were talking on the phone, and her mom Marilyn came home from running errands and found Carmen talking on her phone. Once um, Carmen got off the phone, her mom starts drilling her about who she was talking to. So Carmen responds, it was a friend, but her mom kept prying and prying. And then when Carmen finally told her it was Devin, her mom went ballistic. Her mother does not like the idea of Carmen dating Devin because she was he wasn't born within their nationality, which is a Haitian. Devin is African American. Marilyn wants her daughter Carmen, which is my friend, to date and marry someone who is Haitian. She threatens to disown her and her only daughter, and if she dates anyone outside of their race or ethnicity, like De Devin or any other dude that is of African American descendant, she will disown my friend. If left Carmen, it left Carmen feeling angry, confused, upset, and unhappy for the simple fact that she is, she is being told who she can and cannot date. As a result, she hasn't been happy with her mother since. She's unhappy with how demanding, judgmental, prejudiced, controlling, possessive, unprotect, overprotective, overbearing, and old school her mother is. And that's to the point where she doesn't feel like she can talk to her mom about anything based on how she reacts to things. And it's causing a rift between the two of them. As her friend, I find it unfair that everyone else can live their lives and do what else makes them happy. But my friend Carmen cannot. It seems as if her mom is breaking. At, um, it seems as if my friend is at her breaking point. What would be your best advice for this situation? Sorry this letter was long as fuck. Laugh out loud. By the way, I love your Real Talk videos. I tune in every Wednesday. Well, Kiara, your Real Talk was not um, long, and you were straight to the point, okay? Seriously. So her friend Carmen is 29 years old and lives at home with her mom. And I guess from the takes of this email, they are Haitian. And Carmen's mom is pissed off and is going to disown her because her daughter, who is 29 years old, 
is not dating someone who is Haitian, but is dating an African-American. And it is causing a wedge between Carmen and her mom. And her mom is flipping out and going ballistic. And Carmen is getting upset and doesn't know what to do. What would I do? The fuck I would do is move the fuck out. Like I'm saying, Carmen's 29 years old. She can move the fuck out and get her own place. Worry about her own motherfucking self. If she can get an apartment with you, Kiera, why don't you guys get an apartment together? But this is what she need to do. She need to tell her mother she's, she's the one who's going to live in her life. And it doesn't matter if the person is Haitian, French, Spanish, white, Chinese, Indian, or whatever the fuck she he or she is. She's grown and she can date whoever she chooses to date. Her mama need to mind her motherfucking business. Like on some real shit. Like this girl's 29 years old. I'm not going to say why she's still living at home because that's not my business because it's not about that. But she's 29 years old. If it were me and my, I'm 29 years old and my mother tried to still tell me who the fuck to date and, oh, I don't like him because he's not Haitian or I don't like him because he ain't black or African-American or Italian. I wish my motherfucking parents would tell me that shit because I would tell them like this. Listen, I understand that's how you feel and that's what uh, you have. That was, those are your moral and values. But your morals and values and eyes are not the same. And I'm grown and I'm going to date who I want to date. And as long as they treat me good and have respect for you and me, then it should not matter who I date. Whether it's a man, a male, a woman, a dog, a turkey, or what the fuck ever. You should not be so fucking worried about who I'm dating as long as they have respect for me and this family. That fucking day in outside your race shit has been long gone. It's over fucking, that shit is over a long time ago. I don't give a fuck where you from. I hate when people do that. Well, I'm only going to date this type of person. Or I'm only going to date this type of person. Let me tell you something. A Haitian person, a French motherfucker, a Spanish Asian, I don't give a fuck an alien. As long as they treat you with respect okay, and treat your family with respect, then that's all that should fucking matter. It should not matter who the fuck you dating if they ain't where you from. That's the, that's the, that's the problem with the world today. They always want to fucking say, well, I only want my kids to date and marry this motherfucking type of person. Just because that's where the fuck you from don't mean that that's going to be good for your kid. Also, um, your daughter only date a Haitian dude. This same motherfucking Haitian dude. You so happy because he Haitian. You happy. You happy go lucky because your daughter is dating within your fucking goals. Within your fucking race. Whatever whatever the fuck it is. But the same motherfucking Haitian is beating the fuck out your daughter. Or cheating on her. Or just, just blatantly disrespecting her. But you happy because he Haitian. And she dating the motherfucking Haitian. Like where do we fucking get our, our shit mixed the fuck up at? Like I don't really give a fuck if my kids date outside their race or outside their sexual preference. I don't give a fuck if they date the same sex or the same race. Or It doesn't matter to me as long as they are respected, okay? The problem that comes into play is when you disrespect my motherfucking kids that they, that's dating you. I don't give a fuck if you African-American and you disrespect it. If you white and you disrespect it, the whole point is you disrespect it. So I'm going to go upside your motherfucking head. So I don't really give a fuck. That, that shit doesn't phase me. You know what I'm saying? And being 29 years old, you're a grown ass woman. She should be able to handle her own shit. Her mother needs to back the fuck off and mind her business. So what you need to tell your friend is, you know what? Tell her mom, listen, he respects me and that's all that should matter to you now I understand that you want me to date someone who is a Haitian because that's what we are but how about if I date somebody who is Haitian who is an asshole would you like that or would you rather me date someone who is a perfect gentleman that treats me with respect or, or date somebody who is a Haitian that's a total fucking asshole tell her to ask her mom that question and I bet you her mom wouldn't be able to answer that shit okay I bet you she wouldn't be able to answer that shit so on that note, you guys, I have had enough for the motherfucking day. I'm sorry, but the day is just not the day for me for this real talk because I have answered y'all questions and I have answered everybody else's question of where the fuck business that I needed to tend to today of people that just pissing me the fuck off for the day. So on that note, I'm going to end this real talk and I'm going to go about my motherfucking business. And you guys can leave your comments below. I love you all. Make sure you rate, comment, subscribe. And yeah, I'll see you guys on the next video. She want a bad man to come and video If you want murder me, eh, 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 eh.